Would you survive the first 24 hours in prison? Maybe. Depends on if you know what to expect. Don't worry though, we got you covered in this video. From start to finish, we'll tell you what the first 24 hours in prison are really like, and what to do if you ever find yourself in this position. Introduction to the prison system starts before the accused is actually locked up, so you can think of this first part as a prequel to what's to come. The criminal needs to be tried and convicted by a jury of their peers, and then sentencing can occur. The inmate hears the words, you've been sentenced to prison, and the next thing they know, they're being prepared for transfer to their new home. The inmate is placed in a transport vehicle to whatever prison will be their final destination. This could be a bus, a van, or some other secure vehicle which may house other inmates that are going to be locked up as well. Once the prisoner arrives, the intake process begins. This will take up the first few hours of their time in prison. The handcuffed inmate is led by armed guards from the transport to the reception area. This is where things get serious and a little uncomfortable. First, the inmate's identity is checked and put into the system. This is so their every move and action can be recorded while in prison, from what they eat to what cell they're contained in. When the prisoner was first arrested, their fingerprints and mugshot were taken during booking and entered into a government database. However, at some prison facilities, they will repeat this process for their own records. The inmate's ink-covered fingers are pressed against paper and scanned into the prison's documentation system. Then, they stand motionless in front of a plain backdrop as their mugshot is taken once again. Interestingly, in certain facilities, like Rikers Island, the prison will collect the visitor's fingerprints as well. Once all the information is recorded and the prisoner is in the system, they receive a short orientation and the basic do's and don'ts of the facility. There will be more rules to come later, but the prison guards just want to make sure everyone's on the same page for this next part, because it's about to get really intimate. It's time for the strip search. At this point, the prisoner's probably been standing patiently for quite a while as all the paperwork got done. But now they need to take off all their clothing and prepare for one of the most uncomfortable moments of their life. The guard who conducts the strip search will not be gentle, but most certainly will be thorough. The guard runs their fingers through the hair of the prisoner to make sure nothing is hidden underneath. Then they open the inmate's mouth wide and stick their fingers deep into it to look under the tongue and back at the gums. Hopefully the prisoner doesn't have a sensitive gag reflex because the officer will be in there for a bit. They check the teeth to make sure none of them are false and concealing drugs or anything else. The guards check the nostrils and ears, then move to the rest of the body, rubbing and patting to make sure there's nothing under the skin. Then the real uncomfortable part comes. The prisoner is told to bend over and prepare for a cavity search. First, the genitals are inspected and then the rectum is thoroughly examined to make sure no contraband is hidden within. After the cavity search, the guard checks the legs and feet, does a once over, and then it's time to move to the next part of the intake process. The prisoner gets dressed in their new standard issue clothing and is brought to the medical examiner for a quick checkup. Vitals are taken and a brief physical is conducted to make sure the inmate is in decent health. All of this information is recorded and the prisoner is sent to a holding room. At this point, the newly admitted prisoner has been in the intake process for a few hours. They receive further information about their stay in the prison by one of the administrators of the facility. All prisons are slightly different, but the intake process between them is normally pretty similar. The length and depth of orientation will vary depending on the institution. Some are thorough and give prisoners all the information they could ever need, others not so much. Sometimes the inmate just gets thrown into the mix without so much as a piece of friendly advice. After orientation, the inmates receive their bedroll, which contains sheet, blankets, towels, and shoes. This is all they'll be given besides the prison uniform on their body, so it's not uncommon for intake, the strip search, medical exam, and orientation to take six to eight hours. So a third of the first 24 hours of a prisoner's first day consists of a lot of paperwork and unpleasantness, but that's nothing compared to what's to come. Next, the prisoner is led through the facility. They'll probably experience some harassment and name calling. This can be a rite of passage and sometimes will be used to intimidate new prisoners and put them in their place. However, some inmates recount an eerie silence as they were brought to their cell. It's unclear which is worse. It also depends on the time of day, because each day in prison tends to be a monotonous copy of the day before. The inmates probably pretty hungry at this point, but they missed breakfast and they'll have to wait until the next meal, which could still be hours away. Before anything else, they'll need to drop off their bed supplies at their cell. This is when they'll most likely meet their cellmate for the first time. Prisons claim to do a thorough background check and personality check to make sure the two inmates are compatible and there's no bad blood between them. But it's unlikely this happens in every intake situation. All that new prisoner can hope for is that their cellmate's a nice person who wants to be let out early for good behavior. Since the new prisoner doesn't know what to expect, the first interaction could be pretty tense and go multiple ways. The guards may watch for a few moments, but once the door is shut behind them, the new cellmates need to figure it out for themselves. 
Depending on what time it is, the new inmate might get put to work immediately. If it's time for chores, they could be assigned to wash dishes in the kitchen, or maybe they'll be sent to the laundry room, where they'll fold freshly washed linens. Since they haven't shown the guards what they're capable of yet, the new prisoner will probably be asked to do menial tasks until work time is over, and they can move on to the next part of the day. If they haven't missed lunch from the long intake process or if the prison even serves lunch, the new inmate will probably sit alone for their first meal. Hopefully, they will be left to eat in peace, but this is not always the case. Depending on the prison and its inhabitants, they could be introduced to the hierarchy of the members at their new home. If left alone, the first meal is normally eaten by a new prisoner in silence, as they contemplate the predicament they found themselves in. At some point in the afternoon, the inmate will be given recreation time. They're likely halfway through their first 24 hours in prison at this point, and if everything has gone smoothly, they've only been violated by the prison guard during the strip search. Again, it depends on the facility, but oftentimes there will be some sort of outdoor space for the inmates to spend recreational time. In. The new inmate probably hasn't made any friends yet, so they might just sit and watch a pickup game or the other prisoners work out. According to inmates who have been interviewed, the first day of recreation time is a little nerve-wracking. They normally just keep their heads down and wait for it to be over, because the next part of the day is what every prison movie makes out to be the worst place in the whole facility. After recreation time, it's shower time. New prisoners might skip this, but it's recommended that they keep good hygiene so they don't offend anyone else with their body odor, especially their cellmate. The new inmate grabs their towel and goes to the showers with the rest of the prisoners. Most accounts given by those who have been incarcerated say the shower process is nothing like the entertainment industry makes it out to be, but the new inmate is definitely on guard, especially if it's their first time in the prison system. After shower time, the day is slowly coming to a close, and the prisoners' first 24 are almost over. There will be dinner, because regardless of the prison, inmates are almost always given some sort of meal at the end of the day. However, the time at which they're fed can vary based on the facility, and some of the meal times are pretty strange. In some prisons, dinner can be served as early as 3 p.m., meaning that inmates go hungry until breakfast the following morning, which can be as late as 11 a.m. Depending on the facility, this may be their first meal of the day. The food probably isn't great, and for most first-time inmates, they will not have the resources necessary to order anything from the commissary during their first 24 hours, so they're stuck with whatever is on the prison menu for the night. That brings up an awkward problem for a new inmate. At some point, they'll need to use the bathroom, and if prison food doesn't agree with them, it could be a messy process. This is unfortunate because the toilet is in the cell, and their cellmate will have nowhere else to go while the new prisoner does their business. It's probably best for the new inmate to ask their cellmate what their preference is for bathroom use, but regardless of how either person feels when you gotta go, you gotta go. Needless to say, the first time going in front of the new cellmate is gonna be pretty awkward. Many federal prison facilities do allow structured time for inmates after dinner. This means that the new inmate may find their end of the day filled by an activity assigned to them by the medical professional that assess them at intake. These activities could include Alcoholics Anonymous, religious meetings, anger management, or any number of other programs that are organized by the inmates themselves. The newly incarcerated probably won't have joined a group at this point, and may be given the time to watch television or write a letter to whoever's waiting for them on the outside. Again, it would depend on the prison and the inmate themselves, but the first 24 hours are pretty lonely. They most likely don't know anyone in the prison if it's their first offense, and people in prison are not always the most welcoming since they tend to have trust issues. After around 12 to 18 hours in the prison, the new inmate is sent back to their cell, where the door is locked, and they're left to stare at the underside of the bunk or the ceiling. The lights will remain on as the guards do their round and check to make sure everyone made it back to their cells okay. Around 11 p.m., the lights go out and the echoes of whispers and snoring fill the cell block. The new inmate probably doesn't know their cellmate well enough to talk to them yet, so they lie in silence. Sleep probably is a long way off, if it even comes at all. Many inmates recount their first night in prison as restless. They toss and turn, playing and replaying the events that led them to that moment through their mind. In some prisons, when it's lights out, inmates are to remain silent, but this is not true everywhere. The new inmate might end their first 24 hours in prison listening to conversations being held between cells or the sobs of prisoners who are slowly losing their minds. Regardless of which prison a new inmate finds themselves in, they probably won't sleep much that first night. They'll just lay in the darkness, waiting for the sun to rise the following day, and the next 24 hours of their prison sentence to begin. Now watch, I spent my whole life in prison. Or check out, prison is horrible but not for the reason you might think.